Well, this is just a bonus video about the ficuses in winter. Today is the 26th of January and we are going through a relatively mild spell. But last week we had temperatures of minus 3, minus 4 every morning. So the temperatures have been pretty cold. And in this conservatory of mine, the temperature at which I keep the ficus is only like 3 or 4 degrees centigrade. I can't afford to heat it too much. There is some heat, but there's not a lot of heat. But you see how healthy all the ficus are. They are all very, very healthy. In fact, they're so healthy and so lush that I'm going to show you how to deal with some of these, how to prune them, because many people are afraid of pruning and the trees get out of shape completely. So, so I will take one of these out to show you. The other things I want to show you, just to reassure you and make sure you do not panic. If you look at this tree, this tree has got a lot of yellow leaves and these yellow leaves have black blotching on it. Now there's nothing to worry about. Before the leaves fall, they get the blotching, they turn yellow and then they drop off. Just shake the leaves off and it should be okay. If you look at all these trees, you will see that there are some yellow leaves. So if you see some yellow leaves on your ficus, do not panic. It is quite normal for the trees to do that. Just brush them off and then they will grow again. What I will also show you with these ficus is that you cannot leave them unchecked. However tempting it is, you look at these trees for instance, they are so lush. It's almost like a jungle. But you've got to deal with it. So I'm going to take one of these trees and I'm going to show you how I will deal with it and prune them. But while I was looking at all these ficus, I had a bonus surprise. If you remember, I did a video some months back where this gentleman brought this ficus that he has had for, I think, 20 or 30 years and he left it to grow and he had not pruned it. So I was going to just chop them off, but I said to myself, no, why should I chop it off? So I got Josh to air layer this tree. And just a few weeks ago, I noticed that the roots are so prolific, they're coming out of the bag. Look at this air layering. Look at the roots coming out of the bag. So same with this one, it's full of roots. So I'm going to take these off and I can show you how we put them on. One of them may not have rooted so well. I'm going to deal with this. So we're going to look at a couple of ficus projects uh, today. Right, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these ficuses, but I need to clear the decks. As you can see, I've been working on this Bovernensis pine. I'm halfway through this project, not quite halfway, a third of the way. So I'll get Josh to move it. I'll put it on the turntable so that I have space to work on. And then I'll revert to this tree after we've done the ficus. That's all right, that's all right. Don't worry, the mess is all part of it. Okay, so let's work on this air layering. And as I told you, look at it, I couldn't even believe my eyes. The roots are so prolific that they're coming out of the bag. So let's see what's going on. And I don't think it's more than three months that we've had it on. And bearing in mind that we're in the middle of winter, it shows that growth takes place even in the middle of winter. I've kept it in my conservatory, which is not very warm. The temperature is only like three or five degrees, enough to keep the frost off. And yet it has produced such a lot of root. So let's see what is going on. There's a pot there, Peter. Yeah, this, the whole object is to get it to bud back. So what we've done has achieved its purpose. So let us see. This, in fact, is a small air layering done with this little bit of bubble plastic. And let us see what surprise there is. And look at that lovely root. Look at all these lovely roots. Look at these roots. And those of you who live in the tropics will know that ficus is such a prolific tree. It is really prolific. You don't have to worry. So because I don't want to go too far down there's a bud coming there i want to cut it above the bud so unfortunately i may have to take some of those roots off so we cut this one so our dear friend who brought this tree to me will have three extra trees so that's going to be a nice healthy tree but before i plant it i'm going to take the tips off because if you take the tips off again it doesn't make 
too much demands on the roots and makes it more compact. So he can have this tree, I will pot this up. And then this one also has got a lot of roots. So let's see what's happening here. So the object of this exercise was not to waste. I could have easily pruned it off and watch the tree regrow branches again into a more compact size and compact style. But I wanted to show how easy it is to air layer ficus. Now I haven't used bubble plastic on this one. I've used just ordinary plastic. So you can use whatever type of covering you wish. As I said to you on one of my other videos, when I grew up in India, I used to see these gardeners. They used to just wrap it in ordinary hessian, that means the jute gunny bags. And that was sufficient. Now this one, again, I don't want to go too low. I may break root, but there's plenty root there anyway. So that's that one taken off, number two tree. Now what's happening to this one? This one, I can't see any signs of root on it. So sometimes if you don't cut enough of the bark around it, ah, there are some roots, so no worry. So although they were all done at the same time, this one, for some reason, didn't produce so much root. But we shall see, there is enough root. There I can see certainly one root, but certainly not as much as the other one, I don't know. I can't see a lot of root. Oh, there is some root, there is some root. There is enough root. There you are, there's some roots. So you've got three ficuses here. So you can pop those up. Now, I did not air layer these ones for some reason, but I will again air layer it. Why waste it? So I will probably air layer over here again. I won't show you how to do it because you've seen it done already. And we will do it there so that we will get a compact tree like this. And I will follow the progress of this through. Okay, now, potting these up is not rocket science. Let me show you the entire process so that you can see what we do. This is a compost we use, and some of our compost has got a lot of bark, large drainage lumps of bark and it's quite good material. It may seem a bit crude with these large lumps, but believe you me, it does the trick. In fact, we use this for our young maples as well. So it lets a lot of air in, so that's that one potted up. You notice that I don't use too large a pot. If you use too large a pot, the soil can get sour and it can get too wet because it won't drain too well. So always pot it in the appropriate size pot, pot just large enough to take the root ball. See, this is just large enough to take the root ball. Once it fills that pot, then we transfer it to a bigger pot. So don't be greedy and put it in a large pot straight away. Just gradually transfer it into bigger and bigger pots. So that is that one done. So those three LAs have been potted up, and we're going to LA two more. So out of this old stuff, we will get five trees, five extra trees, Plus, we have the original one. Now, let me show you what to do with these ones. I'll keep this, I won't throw this away, I'll use it again for this one. Let me just put another turntable on. You must be wondering why I'm such a messy person, but I'm not. I'm keeping all this to show you how much I'm removing from that Bovinensis point. I will revert to that project in a minute. Now this tree is typical of the ficuses that are sold commercially. We sell a lot of these and they are ideal for uh, keeping in the house. 
very, very easy to uh, develop and to grow on. So, when you get all this long growth, you certainly can prune them back. Don't be afraid to prune it back. Just by taking two shoots off, and if you want to stick this in soil, they will root and become new plants. I always like to improve the tree, so what do we do to improve the tree? Most of these commercial trees that are produced in China and Taiwan, they are just mass produced, and the growers are there just to grow the trees without any uh, concern about the shape or the style. But if you want to improve it, you can certainly improve it. Again, let me just find some scraps of old wire. Right, so with any of these trees, the secret is always to open it out. Once you open it out, it begins to take on a different uh, look and feel about the tree. So, let me... There's always a better way of wiring. So, let me just give a little anchor before I go to the next branch. Again, two branch principle, as always. Okay, let me go on to the next branch there. to trap the little twigs and branches. I can't emphasize enough the importance of this gin ply. It's such an important and useful tool to help you with the wiring. The ends of those wires you cannot really hold with your fingers. The gin ply makes it easier. See, I'm going to open out the tree just to make the triangle more apparent or more obvious. Okay, let's get on to the next one. Okay, I'm not doing two, two branch principle. I'm just hooking the wire onto that thick wire and taking it out to this branch because this branch, I can't find a pair near enough to wire, so I will just do this. So I do occasionally break the rules. And I'm going to open it out just a little more. Remember that ficus are very vigorous trees, so they grow very fast. So if you don't want the wires to mark the tree you've got to keep a close eye on it and remove the wires when they've done the work and make sure that they don't mark Ficuses like this, they are produced by sticking little branches that thick into the soil and they will root. They're so easy to root. Okay, now that I've wired it, now let me just see. Uh, the left side is too wide, so let's head it back. So I think that literally two pieces of wire has improved the look of that tree. So this is what you do. You've got to prune the tips and if you want to shape it a little more, you can always do a bit of wiring. Now let's look at that very big one. I will bring that big tree. This is a beast of a tree. It's large. Take the label off. I always find labels distracting. So this is typical of these ficuses that are sold for indoors. Now this tree 
has got good ramification and a good triangular shape. But I'm not satisfied with it. If you want to improve the tree, there is always scope for improving it. So what I will do is I'll do a little bit of wiring. I'll rationalize the branches. And I will also make sure that the branches are not just sprouting upwards. If you look at these little twigs, this branch here started from here like this at this point last year and all this grew. So if you don't prune it, it gets longer and longer and they will grow upwards. So they have to be dealt with. So many of these, they may, may need some wire. Okay, now assuming that this is my tree, I know that I have to sell this. How would I look at it? Okay, the overall shape is there. A lot of people are happy with it, but I want to show the trunk. So let me get rid of that. Show the trunk. Now all these will make beautiful cuttings. The thick is that it will root. They will root without any problem. Make a clean cut. I like the aerial roots. Most of these ficuses are very good at producing these aerial roots. So this is where we have to bite the bullet. Once a year you need to cut it back, short back and sides. It may not look that good for the time being, but for the long term good of the tree, you have to do it. Otherwise you lose control and the tree will become a mess and it will be very hard to get it back to its original nice shape. If you don't like aerial roots which are growing in the wrong place, look at this aerial root, it's really odd. That aerial root came here, joined with this branch and it became a branch. I'm not sure if I like it there, but I will leave it for now. If I don't like it, I may get rid of it. The only trouble with aerial roots, they may look exotic, but it does hide from the beauty of the trunk. You see, there's a beautiful trunk there. And if you leave too many aerial roots to grow, it hides the trunk. So. I know that if it was my tree, I would get rid of this root and even get rid of this root. But a lot of my customers like the aerial roots, so because I have to sell the tree, I will have to leave it, you know. It's not what I like, it's what the customers often like. As I've become older, I've discovered or realized that very often you get so obsessed with your own opinions and own prejudices that you don't care for what other people think. And this is a valuable lesson that I've learned that as one gets older, you have to respect what other people like. So let me do a bit of wiring on this one. So this one, I want to open it out a little more like that to flatten because they tend to spring up. And that I don't think is a good, good trait. Doesn't look so good. I keep trying to use the old wires, but you know, I'll use a bit of new one. Now, because this hasn't got a branch to anchor to, I'm going to anchor this wire to some of these aerial roots that are growing. I'm going to anchor it to this. Let's take it up to there. Not many people like to wire their indoor trees, maybe because they are a bit timid or because most of these so-called indoor trees are purchased by just very, very ordinary amateurs who are not really bonsai people. They just like to keep a potted plant. But if you want to improve the bonsai, you need to do the basic bonsai chores like this, wiring, shaping. So I brought that branch down like that to improve it. Now, I can even be more drastic and cut a lot of this further back so that when the shoots grow, they don't 
go up and merge with the tree. Same with this, see how they're springing up. That's already too old to do anything. So I'm going to do even more drastic pruning like that. Really drastic. Oh, what a lot of useful cuttings I will have. So I got to ask myself, do I need this? I might keep it. It may be a nice feature going that way. So let us wire that little one. I would guess by the end of the summer it should be possible to remove the wires because it will have done its work. Ficuses are such vigorous trees that they do the work and they grow so fast so the setting of the branches that have been wired don't take a lot of time. But then there is also the negative side because ficuses are so vigorous you don't get very fine growth that you get with these temperate climate trees. So this is the lower section dealt with. Now I'm looking at the back. See, these are all stray branches that are growing from the wrong place. So let's get those out. I will keep these heavy roots, as I said, although too many may not put that good. See, already the branch is springing up that much, becoming very hard to deal with. I still can bend this a bit, so I might use a very thick piece of wire and bend this outwards. You see how this branch is going upwards like that? I want it to come down, and this I want to come down. Because if you don't watch it, this will go straight into that uh, upper apex. So. Needless to say, I've seen some beautiful ficus in Taiwan and uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, where they grow these great big ficuses, ginormous trees, exactly the sort of trees I like. And they can be achieved in a very short space of time. Many of these ficuses, they grow wild. They grow in the walls of buildings and rich source of collected material. Just by scouring these old buildings, you'll find lots of ficuses. There are plenty for you to take. I'm bending it flat so that it doesn't spring upwards. Now if we look at this, there's another weird branch over there. Notice that they fuse two branches, they tie two branches together. Now this pad is too high. This is just one year's growth. This is what we have to do. Seems a bit drastic. So the proverbial short back and sides, which is the barber's term, hairdresser's term. Now this one I should really wire out. Let's see if I can do that. A 
there's no true branch principle on this one either. I've just hooked it onto the branch further back. Then this bunch here, look at that, it's too high, much too high. So again, if I pot all these, I've got hundreds and hundreds of cuttings, but I haven't got the space to grow them all. And then the apex also I need to deal with. Otherwise, it'll reach the sky. Now, if you wanted to, you can open these out even more so that the crown is not so much of an apex, but more conical. Let me just put a couple pieces of wire in there. I don't know why some people have problems growing ficus well. Uh, one of my customers who happens to be a person I've known for quite a while, he bought a ficus about three years ago for his office. And his office, of course, is not manned over the weekend, so he's away for the weekend. So certainly the weekends it doesn't get watered. But he just keeps it on the windowsill. And after three years, he showed me a picture. I will, in fact, download it from the message he sent me to show you how well it is doing. Absolutely perfect, as good as some of the ones that we have in our nursery. So there is no excuse for not growing ficus well. I think the problem is if you keep it in too warm a room, they can stand up to, I would say, uh, 15 degrees, maybe even 20 degrees, but no more. The cooler they are, the better. My conservatory, I told you, the temperature for the most part is more like five degrees. At night time, it goes up to three degrees. So it is pretty cool. It's not overly warm. And yet they do so well. And once spring comes and well into the summer, they will grow extremely well. And as for compost, they will grow at any compost. They are not fussy about soil. You don't have to use special bonsai soil for the indoor <coughs> ficus like this. They are absolutely <coughs> impervious to, <coughs> you know, all these fancy bonsai soils. They don't need it. <coughs> so that's how I have tidied up this ficus, made the cone wider, and I could open it up more if I wanted to, but that's the height I would keep it. So this is my preferred front. I've kept the area roots, although I am not a great lover of too many area roots. Now let's look and see what the back is like. That is the back, which has got more branches. So that is all you need to do each year 
provided your ficus is growing well. Definitely trim the end. So can you see what a lot we've trimmed off just that tree. So this is how you deal with the ficuses.